Welcome to Developing Palettes. This review recap is brought to you by J.C. Newman. Founded in 1895 by Julius Caesar Newman, J.C. Newman Cigar Company is the oldest family-owned premium cigar maker in America. J.C. Newman rolls its El Rolage, factory throwouts, and Trader Jack cigars by hand-operated vintage cigar machines at its historic cigar factory in Tampa, Florida. It also hand-rolls its Brick House, Perla Del Mar, El Baton, and Quorum cigars at the J.C. Newman Pinza Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. J.C. Newman's Diamond Crown, Maximus, Julius Caesar, and Black Diamond cigars are handmade at Tabaclera Afuente in the Dominican Republic. With its longtime partners, the Fuente family, the Newmans founded the Cigar Family Charitable Foundation, which supports low-income families in the Dominican Republic with education, health care, vocational training, and clean water. Learn more by visiting jcnewman.com. Hello, everyone. Aaron Lou is here in the Ventura Cigar Company studio. With me today is June Liu. How are you doing, June? Pretty good. So today we are talking about the Jessam Crawl Toothpicks 2.0 Habano. Uh, the cigar is a Robusto 5x50. Comes out of the Tabacalera de Aragon factory in Nicaragua. Uh, Wrapper is Habano, binders from Indonesia, the filters from Nicaragua. Uh, price point is $6, and the cigar was released in August of 2018. So with all that out of the way, June, what was your smoking experience like? Um, smoking experience-wise uh, was pretty consistent, uh, which... I guess it should really surprise me, given that it's mixed. Uh, but this is one that's mixed filler, right? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, so in terms of the actual flavor notes, um, you know, I, I got some like soft cedar, uh, light red pepper spice. Um, you know, I, I got this meatiness um, from from the cigar as well, um, as well as this like creamy milk. Um, it's actually kind of weird. Like, I feel like some of this JSK stuff within, like, this Habano one, certainly the Nugs, um, I get this, like, gamey meatiness out of it. Um, I know a lot of the fanboys are giving me shit to Charlie about it, but I actually <laughs> taste it as well. Right. <laughs> so, go ahead and give me shit. So, <laughs> uh, uh, retro, uh, good dose of, like, uh, more of that red pepper spice, which I actually liked. Um Finish wise, I thought it was a little lacking. Um, it was mainly the cedar that leaves, uh, you know, that, that basically leaves the palate as soon as it enters the palate. So, yeah. um, strength and body wise, medium. In terms of the construction, uh, burn was really good. You know, uh, I, I took a point off just, you know, due to the flakiness of the ashes. But other than that, burn was great. Uh, even burn, cool burn, uh, pretty good ash retention. Uh, and draw was perfect. What about you? Yeah, for me, it started with slightly sweet cedar and some cinnamon. Uh, shortly thereafter, a little bit of mustiness joins in. Um, Retro Hill kind of shows a uh, musty cedar, and then about an inch and a slight chalkiness joined in. Um, as the first hour was wrapping up, uh, cinnamon and chalkiness had left. Uh, cedar kind of took on a slightly toasted note. Goes along with that mustiness. Uh, strength was slightly below medium. Then getting into the second third, the cedar's transitioned to more of like a general wood note, but kind of keeps it toast um, as some char joins in as well. Uh, char continues to build up through the first half inch. Uh, then at the one inch mark, the char begins to ease up, uh, kind of lets that toasted version of the wood shine a little bit more. Uh, Retrail shows the toasted wood and the mustiness. And then uh, as the second third is coming to a close, uh, a little bit of a vegetal note joined the profile. Uh, strength bumps up to medium. And getting into the final third, uh, vegetal note increases to become even with the toasted and the musty wood. Uh, char is more in the background, uh, about a half inch in. Uh, toasted note becomes a bit fuller. Uh, Retro Hill also has the toasted wood up front with the mustiness right behind it. And uh, as the cigar came to a close, the profile kind of maintained that toasted musty wood up front. Uh, the char and the vegetal notes slightly behind it, strength stale at the medium mark. Uh, in regards to construction, uh, burn was pretty straight the whole way. Only issue was the cigar required two relights in the second third. Um, ash held on one inch increments, and in regards to the draw, I thought it was perfect, just for the amount of resistance that I prefer. So overall, what were your thoughts on this one? Um, I said overall, good. Um, nothing inherently bad, inherently great about the cigar. Uh, pretty consistently good. I, I smoked through like three, four of these guys. Um, I, I, I felt like the flavors kind of hit the major components for me. Like, you got that spice, sweetness, earthiness. Uh, it did a good job of all that. Um, you know, at, at times I felt like I got bored with the same profile, but, you know, then again, for six bucks and overall good tasting profile, I really don't have a big issue with that. Um, I think, you know, especially if you want to enjoy a cigar that you don't really want to like think too much about, and it's just like a, a perhaps like a, uh, a good tasting cigar, uh, some might call it like a yard gar or something. Mm -hmm. I think those will fit the bill really nicely.
Right. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a pretty serviceable cigar. Has a you know really attractive price point. Um, I thought the flavor profile in the first shirt was good. Kind of you know became average from the second third on. Um, you know, I think it, you know it could be a daily smoke for people that like this flavor profile. You know, it's it's, it's got a price point that's low enough for that. Um, so you know, I'd be open to smoking more of these. Like kind of like you said, if you're you know, kind of kicking around doing other stuff and you just want to smoke something that's not going to break the bank, but also has you know some decent flavor to it, but you don't have to like focus on it to get there. Yeah, I'd have no, I don't have no problem doing that with this cigar. Um, so getting into the scores, uh, you were to the top six point seven two. I gave it a five point nine zero. How do you think six point seven two match up with your experience? Um, good. I mean, overall, I thought flavors were good. Um, with the last third being average, uh, I give her really good remarks for burning construction. Um, and basically, any anytime like that happens, it should hit around that you know upper sixes ish yeah. mark. Yeah, for me, five point nine is a good fit. I mean, slightly above average flavor profile. Um, pretty good construction, a little bit of issues with the burn. Um, but yeah, it get, you know, gets it near that six mark. Um, so that worked out for me. Um, any other final thoughts from you on this one? Um. Oh, maybe I could talk a little bit about the um, the other toothpick, the Maduro one. Yeah. I think they're both the same price. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They've got to be. Okay. Uh, I, I would say I prefer the other one more so than this one. Right. I know they're different cigars, but in terms of yeah. my own personal enjoyment, I would, you know, smoke more of those than these. Yeah. I had a – I when I smoked the Maduro, I felt like I was like, eh, this is okay. But I said, I, yeah. I think the Habano will probably hit me a little bit better. But I think oh. when I smoked this, I, I'd have to look back at my score. I don't remember. I, I think that, that maybe they're hitting right around the same mark, or maybe even I still like the Maduro better. But um, And that typically surprises me. I typically, I think I typically gravitate more towards the non-Maduro version of a cigar, but if you know if it's a, if it's a similar blend otherwise but yeah. um so but i have to check back on that i don't, I don't really recall what the score was but yeah. this didn't this didn't blow me away like i, I thought it was going to be a bu- you know step above the maduro so that no. you know a little bit think, of a bummer I mean, but it's still good yeah i i don't think it's supposed to blow you blow any of us away um and, and we all know that coming into it uh but this is more like hey is it good serviceable and if that checks the mark then i think you know riste did what you're what he was supposed to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no. you know, not not a lot of people are coming out with six dollar cigars. So, right. um, you know, and when you do, you, you know, you're you're trying to shoot above that price point in regards to the experience and value and all that stuff. So, if you can mm-hmm. do that, you're successful. You know. Yeah. So it works out mm-hmm. that way. All right. If you're just catching this video on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to us. We'll also check out the full written review on the website developmentpalettes.com. Follow us on all the social media channels, and you can catch all of our re- re- recaps on podcasts, so iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one.